when we manage to ride more and take on longer training rides, the temptation can just be to eat more in order to recover. I mean, what, we have earned it, right? Yeah, but is it really that simple? Is that really the thing that we want to do to maximize recovery? You know, get home and end up raiding the kitchen. Well, in this video, we're going to give you everything you need to know in order to aid recovery. Now, I'm looking forward to this one. Could do with it. Are you? A bit of food. Woo! Recovery in general is a very broad term, so before we get started, let's clear up a few things. Recovery, or if you want a fancier term, the restoration of performance capacity can be split into two types. First up, acute recovery. Now this is when you're looking to rapidly recover in the hours straight after cycling, so you're able to perform at your best the following day. Then you have long-term adaptions. This is when you're looking to recover but maximize any training adaptions and perform better down the line in the future. So before you take on a recovery strategy or decide what to eat post ride or in the days after a ride, you need to decide, do you want to perform tomorrow or 10 weeks from now? Research shows that things such as high antioxidant supplements and ice baths can improve your recovery from day to day, but at the same time can actually hinder your adaption to training. If you want your performance levels to improve, you want to avoid the things that reduce those short-term stresses. Take away those stress signals and you also take away the signals to adapt and improve your performance on the bike. Now, if you're looking to really recover, you want to make the most of compression, antioxidants and ice baths. This way, you're really maximizing as much recovery as humanly possible. Nutrition plays a huge role in how we recover from our rides. Of course, there are physical things we can do, ice baths, hot and cold therapy, compression clothing, massage, stretching, but the evidence for nutrition as a role in recovery far outweighs anything else. Yeah, now there's three things that we want to look to recover from. There's dehydration, glycogen depletion, and muscle soreness. Now these can all be tackled at different time frames. We can restore fluid balance within hours. Glycogen restoration may take at least 24 hours in some cases, and muscle repair will take even longer. But we can start the process early, which is why it's vitally important to keep eating on the bike. You want to start your ride sufficiently hydrated, not too much, not too little. And try to get in the habit of weighing yourself so that you can try and keep your body weight constant before you start your race or your ride. Now, weigh yourself after your ride, and then any weight you've lost, try to replace one and a half times over with fluid in the five hours after stopping. Aim to replace 600 ml of fluid for every two kilograms lost. And the reason for spreading this out is because if you drink it all at once, well, you'll kind of stimulate urine production and probably won't retain all those fluids. Now, it has to be noted that this is a very aggressive approach and you only want to take this strategy if you're looking to perform a couple of hours later. But if you're looking to perform the day after, then you can take a much more moderate approach. And a good top tip is also to use some sodium. Now, this is good for fluid retention and you can take it through your drink, but also through food. I feel like I need to drink some fluid from the air but it's just got not got much sodium in it. Oh, bad joke. On to the all important carbohydrates. Now, in most rides, muscle and liver glycogen stores will be used up. These are essentially your carbohydrate stores. Now, these are so important because if they drop below a certain level, your performance will be significantly impaired. You can use fat as an energy source, but this requires a lot more oxygen, as you can probably tell, I'm a bit out of breath. So you can't access those higher intensity levels that you really need if you want to ride your bike fast. So in essence, when you do run out of your carbohydrate stores or they run low, you'll essentially be creeping home rather slowly, as I found out in a recent video with Hank when I purposefully tried to bonk. 
Completely restoring your muscle glycogen stores can take up to 24 hours. Now that is for a well-trained individual like someone like Connor, I guess. And someone less trained, it can take slightly longer, especially if you've got muscle damage or you've got a reduced carb intake. So what we would suggest is as soon as you finish your training ride or whatever ride you've been going on, replenish those carbohydrates. That way you can perform well the following day. To achieve muscle glycogen synthesis, carbohydrate intake is critical. The advice is usually 1.2 grams per kilogram an hour for three or four hours post-exercise to maximize glycogen synthesis. For example, this can be one of these food portions every hour. 400 to 500 ml of milkshake or fruit smoothie, 500 ml of a sports drink and two bananas, three energy bars, two slices of toast, bread, bagel with jam, banana or honey topping, plus two cereal bars. Fruit salad with 200 grams of yogurt and honey, chicken panini, rice cakes, 300 ml of a protein shake with an energy bar. Now protein intake is really important and it has to be said that these effects happen over a long term and not in the short term. So when you look at a 24 hour period, you're not going to see many effects to your recovery. You might see some help in muscle soreness, but not all studies can confirm this. Whilst protein intake won't necessarily help you from day to day, it will aid you over time. So if you're looking to perform over a multiple day event, for example, or maybe you're training hard and looking to boost your performance for a date in the future, protein intake in that case is pretty essential. Now, a good recommendation is 20 to 25 grams of protein consumed immediately after exercise and then regular intakes of protein in your meals every three to four hours thereafter. Recovery Mix is the perfect tool to use because it allows you to get the right dosage of protein, which helps with muscle soreness, but also to increase muscle in the future. But it's the mix of carbohydrate and protein that allows you to increase your muscle glycogen synthesis. Research has shown that the rate of muscle glycogen storage can be improved by up to 38% if carbohydrates are eaten after your ride in conjunction with proteins. So you're not just drinking that protein shake after your ride to help repair damaged muscles, but also to improve the rate of muscle glycogen storage, restoring all that glycogen into your muscles as best as possible. Proteins can't be stored within the body and any excess will be eliminated. So if you're taking on huge amounts of protein, then this is probably just gonna be a waste of time. But the best piece of advice I can give you is take your proteins in small, manageable bites over a longer period of time. That way, you're utilizing every bit of protein you're taking in. So after a post-ride, and you're looking for a post-ride snack, then the best snack I could give you would be a protein bar. Oh, nice little protein bar. So there you have it, our top tips to aid recovery so you can perform as well as possible in the following days after your training. But do you have any of your own tips or maybe nutrition strategies you like to employ to really get the most out of your recovery? Please let us know in the comment section down below if you do. Yeah, don't forget, head over to GCN Training if you want to utilize all that amazing content that we've got over there to help you get fitter, faster, and ultimately stronger. We'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now.